in the beautiful Indian land of Kashmir, lined with snow-capped mountains and lush pine forests, lives a young, gorgeous woman named Zuni. She is talented and adored by everyone, but she is also blind from birth. She gets a prestigious invitation to perform at the Republic Day celebration at the Indian President's Palace in Delhi. But her father, Zulfikar, is very cautious about her safety and worried. He advises her that choosing between right and wrong is easy. But the toughest is to pick the greater of two goods and the lesser of two evils. On the other hand, her mother, Nafisa, thinks that it is up to Zuni to go or not. Nafisa reminds Zulfikar about listening to one's heart at times, not always the brain. She blushes when he replies that he chose her by listening to his heart. Zuni is confused about the trip and asks her parents to decide for her. Immediately, Zulfikar decides that Zuni shall not go, but Nafisa objects. Nafisa thinks that Zuni must explore life on her own and find her person, just like Zulfikar found Nafisa. Back then, they met during a football match. Zulfikar had made a penalty kick that accidentally fell on Nafisa, and they fell in love. Once Zuni leaves, Nafisa shares her worry that Zuni might never find her prince charming and should learn to be independent. Zuni decides to go with her fellow dancers, Mebuba, who prefers to be called Bobo, is the diva of the group. But the most vocal one is Fathima, aka Fatty. Rubina, or Ruby, is quite old-fashioned, and they are all led by their teacher, Helen. Zalfakar is sad to see Zuni leave, and Nafisa is scared too. But she also hopes Zuni finds a romantic lover who will sing poems for her. As the train departs, Nafisa asks her friends to keep Zuni safe and prays to God. Zuni has one last doubt. What love poem would she sing back? Nafisa recites a few poetic verses that mean to find refuge in each other's hearts and be destroyed in love. Once in Delhi, Helen has planned to spend a few days for rehearsal, the performance, and also for sightseeing. A bus with a driver and a tour guide is arranged. The driver's name is Bao Wan, but Helen calls him Cartoon Network as he is funnily dressed with animate actions. Bao Wan points up when he is asked about the tour guide. Here comes the tour guide, Rahan Khan, making a formidable entry by reciting poems and jumping down from the roof of the bus. All of the girls applaud in awe, except for Zuni, who doesn't see him jump down. Helen is not impressed either, and she asks everyone to board the bus. Rian asks Zuni to help him up, and when she extends her hand away from him, he jokes about whether she is blind. She confirms and asks back whether he's also blind. Rian thanks God that he is not, which Zuni comments is inappropriate to tell a blind person. He explains that if he were blind, he would never have been able to see the most beautiful person on earth, which is Zuni. She is further touched when he adds that God must have made her blind so that she has some imperfection to avert evil eyes. Fatty fetches Zuni and scorns Rihan for his presumptuous attitude. On their way, Rihan can't take his eyes off Zuni, much to Fatty's irritation. Zuni is knitting, and Rihan recites a poem about how he wants to be a roll of wool wrapped around her fingers and become a sweater, warming her. Everyone, including Zuni, is impressed but Fatty cringes. She tells him to put away his cheap poetry and that if Zuni was interested, she would have talked to him. Rihan jokes that he assumed Zuni was mute too. Zuni laughs and Rihan continues to recite poetry, urging her to speak. She replies in poetry about how man's desire has no limits. At first, Rihan shows them around the historical red fort. He takes Zuni by hand to help her with the steps. She mentions that she can manage, but he jokes that he cannot manage himself around her. When Rihan moves away to take a call, Zuni presses Bobo to describe how he looks. She tells her that he got killer looks. Fatty scolds them, and Rubai disapproves of Rihan because he is a womanizer and an atheist. They warn Zuni to stay away from him. Rihan, who has been hiding nearby, overhearing everything, surprises them with another poem, and Zuni smiles. Her friends take her away, but Rihan follows her around, having fallen in love with her. He sings and dances around her, wooing and flirting. Fatty angrily tries to keep her away, but Rihan's antics have no end. Zuni enjoys Rihan's romantic shenanigans. When they return at night, Rihan pulls her away secretly and asks her to come alone with him the next day after her dance rehearsal. He promises to show her the real Delhi. She pushes him away with a smile and walks away. Balwin asks him why he wants this blind girl when he has already had enough women in his life. He just replies that everyone wants the moon and to be loved so deeply that one cannot even sleep. Zuni stands on the balcony, looking at the moon, as she cannot sleep. She remarks that she has not felt this awake in so long. The next day, at the dance practice, she is unable to focus as she cannot take her mind off of Rihan's offer. She tries to call her mother for advice, but she doesn't pick up. 
Then she decides to go with Rihan, but lies to Helen that she won't be joining the sightseeing and will remain at the hostel. Fatty mentions that it is for the better as she would be away from the creepy tour guide, Rihan. Rihan is waiting outside the palace and chatting with newly acquainted security guard Jolly Good Singh. When he hears Umi calling him, he recites how it is divine bliss to hear her say his name. Before they get into a rickshaw, Rihan gets a call from work asking him about his abrupt absence. When Zuni realizes this, she reminds him of her father's advice that someone who is not loyal to his work shouldn't be trusted. He retorts that he snuck out of work only to spend the day with her, not to hear a speech about loyalty. Zuni replies that her mother always says that loyalty is the most significant. She insists that he return to work then and come back the next day on proper leave. He warns her that if she forces him to leave today, he won't return again. But she firmly says he would. The next day, she anxiously waits for Rihan, while Jolly Good Singh keeps her company. When they wonder whether he will come, Rihan makes an entrance as usual with romantic poetry. When they walk by the mist-laden monuments of Delhi, Zuni asks Rihan how he would show Delhi to a blind girl like her. He guides her intimately to feel his sound, smell, and touch. He promises to show her Delhi similarly. He takes her to the Gateway of Blood, where Mughal princes and colonial British rulers have shed blood for power. He grabs her wrists and forces her to feel the rough walls tainted with blood in order to understand the real history of Delhi. Terrified, she tries to run away. He teases how scared she is, and she laughs out loud, revealing that she was also acting. She mocks him about how he tried to scare someone who is blind by describing the color of blood. In the following intimate moment, he feels her heart and her fear. She cherishes this moment. Back home in Kashmir, Zulfi is worried how Zuni must be struggling and starving with no one to take care of her. But Nafisa smiles patiently, as she knows Zulfi just misses his daughter. Meanwhile, Zuni is having a great time with Rihan, going to amusement parks and eateries. Unable to contain his anxiety, Zulfi takes off for Delhi, but Nafisa stops him by pointing out that Zuni should become self-reliant. After visiting the India Gate, a war memorial, Zuni tells Rihan that he has truly shown her Delhi. The India Gate has an eternal flame for martyrs, which Zuni says brings out one's patriotism, just like the Taj Mahal spurs love. Rihan replies that such emotions are bogus and only physical needs are real. She asks whether he spent all this time with her to fulfill such needs, and he tries to evade answering her. Zina, a vivaciously dressed young woman and an old fling of Rihan, joins them and teases him. Zuni is puzzled but reacts calmly. Zina tries to flirt with him, but Rihan recites another poem, clarifying that he now belongs to Zuni. Once Zina leaves, Rihan talks about how he believes only in physical needs, not feelings or love. Zuni affirms that she believes only in love. They sit in silence, realizing their differences. Back in the hotel, Fatty scolds Zuni for roaming with Rihan and lying to everyone. Zuni explains that she lied because Fatty would behave this way. Fatty reasons that she was just protecting Zuni, but Zuni retorts that Fatty is protecting her blindness, not her. Fatty is worried that Rihan is unsuitable for her. Zuni doesn't care about that as long as she feels happy and lively with him. Fatty swears to never let Zuni go with him. It is India's Republic Day, and finally it is time for their dance show. As they enter the presidential palace, Zuni asks Jolly Good Singh to let Rihan enter the palace to see the show. But Jolly Good refuses, as Rihan does not have permission, and the palace has high security protocols. Zuni begins the performance by speaking about the glory of India. They dance, singing about the diversity of the country. Outside, at the gate, Rihan begs Jolly Good Singh to let him inside the premises to view her dance. As the dance intensifies, Jolly Good lets Rihan inside with a visitor's pass. He is exalted. And so is Zuni when Bobo lets her know that he has walked in. After the dance, her friends, even Fatty, let her go to Rihan, having realized their love. Rihan cannot take his eyes off her as he thinks she looks extra beautiful that day. She jokes that he still looks the same to her. He takes her to a Sufi shrine, where he blesses her eyes with holy water to heal them. Zuni is touched by his affection. When they walk on the roads, Rihan has to attend a call and is distracted. Zuni tries to walk, but almost gets hit by the zooming traffic. Shocked by the honking horns, Rihan pulls her away and scolds her for being careless. She explains that she just wanted to impress him. He retorts that her life is too precious to waste on him, but she quotes how her mother says that something has to be lost to gain something. Rihan is irritated by how she often quotes her parents, but never says anything on her own. Zuni affirms that she likes him. He tries to evade it, but she hugs him, placing a hand over his heart, and tells him that now he is the one who is scared. 
Zuni acknowledges that he is afraid of commitment, yet she continues to love him. The next day is their last day in Delhi. Zuni anxiously waits for Rihan, but he doesn't show up. She calls her mother, who congratulates her on the wonderful dance, show that they watched on TV. Zuni asks Nafisa what she would have done if her father had disappeared back in the early days of their relationship. Nafisa replies that she would have questioned his behavior. Zuni wonders whether she should do the same and shares her unreciprocated love for Rihan. Nafisa advises that she may love whomever, but give her self-respect to only the one who would sacrifice himself for her. She goes to the monuments where Rihan works as a guide and confronts him in her usual polite and poetic manner. She gifts him the blue sweater she has been knitting. Rihan rejects it and asks her to love a prince, not a devil like him. She disagrees, as waiting for a prince is unrealistic, and she just wants to spend at least half a day with him, if not years. She insists, but he refuses because he is a womanizer and would only destroy her. He tries to walk away, but finally joins her when she sings a poem about being willing to be destroyed by his love. He promises her the most beautiful 12 hours ever. They are about to have a candlelight dinner on the terrace when it begins to pour down. She enjoys the drizzle, and he joins too. Drenched in the rain, they make love. The next day, Zuni wakes up and asks Rihan to take her to the railway station to board the train. She mentions that she has forgotten to do the eye test her mom had asked her to. Also, she wants to buy a chess set for her father. On the other hand, Rihan wakes up, realizing he is also having feelings for her. On their way to the railway station, she asks Rihan to convey her regards to Jolly Good Singh. When she is boarding the train, she remarks that she doesn't expect anything from him. She only feels rejuvenated by his love, not destroyed. Rian stands speechless on the platform. She breaks down into tears in the arms of Fatty as the train leaves. Rian surprises her by getting inside the train and finally committing. Her friends pull the emergency chain and they get out. Back at home in Kashmir, her parents are equally thrilled and nervous when asked their consent about Rihan marrying Zuni. They support her decision and want to join her in Delhi for the wedding. Meanwhile, Rian takes Zuni for the eye test. She had not followed up for five years, and the doctor informs her that now she has some chance to heal her blindness through retinal replacement. The doctor schedules the surgery and Rian is anxious. She reminds him to pick up her parents from the railway station and also Jolly Good Singh from the presidential palace. Before she leaves for the surgery, he ties his lucky charm necklace around her neck and reminds her how much he loves her. The news on the TV says that the Independent Kashmir Front, a t organization for the independence of Kashmir, has threatened with bomb blasts in both Pakistan and India, the two stakeholder countries. Sooner, a devastating blast happens at the presidential palace, killing a few and injuring many more. The ICF claims responsibility for the blast and demands Kashmir be independent of both India and Pakistan. At the hospital, Zuni gains vision, and she opens her eyes to see her parents eagerly waiting. She asks to see Rihan, but no one answers her. Instead, they take her to the mortuary, where bruised bodies lie. The police ask her to identify the remains of Rihan's body. Her parents try to console her, but nothing can contain her grief as she sees his blue stained with blood. The anti squad, headed by Sushil Rawat, is appointed to investigate the blast. He is irritated by the pestering media and by the presence of the co-leader, Tayagi. Tayagi is an acclaimed investigator from the intelligence agency. She has already identified that the mastermind behind the blast is an anonymous, intelligent man who recently led the Ekh to become a high-tech organization. His identity is unknown, but he is causing destruction to India and Pakistan alike. This is none other than Rihan, who has many avatars, acting as a tourist guide and lover. He built a relationship with Zuni and Jolly Good Singh to access the palace, plan, and execute the bomb blast. Rihan calls his grandfather, the one who founded the IKF, and groomed him to be a perfect and informs him that the blast worked, but the mission is incomplete. His grandfather scorns him for being distracted by a woman and failing. Rian promises that it is a closed chapter and swears to complete the mission perfectly, as he was raised to do. Seven years go by. Tayagi and Rawat are still working on the IKF case. Things are on the verge of the worst, as IKF has assembled a nuclear missile by acquiring parts internationally. They are planning to blast the important cities of India and Pakistan to force both countries to free Kashmir. Rawat thinks that the IKF's plan wouldn't work as they do not have the required triggers to use the missile. But Tayagi thinks they would try to access it. The defense minister orders the six triggers stored in six different parts of India to be immediately transferred to utmost security in Delhi. Tayagi suspects that the unknown IKF's mastermind would plan to steal them during this transfer. 
One of these triggers is stored at the army base in Kashmir. Shockingly, Rian has already worked his way into impersonating Captain Ranjeev at this army base. He works with Major Suraj, who is tasked with transferring the trigger to Delhi. It turns out that in an encounter with the IKF led by his grandfather, the real Captain Ranjeev and his team were slayed, and Rihan impersonated him. Meanwhile, Rawat is still annoyed about having to work with Tayagi. On the routine checking of the army officers working at the Kashmir army base, Rawat's assistant mentions that Captain Ranjeev has not contacted his wife for a while. While Rawat dismisses this as a nagging wife's issue, Tayagi smells danger. She figures out that the real Captain Ranjeev has been replaced by the impersonator IKF leader. Before Tayagi's message could reach the army team transferring the trigger in a helicopter, Rihan poisoned all their drinks and eliminated everyone. He blasts the helicopter and flies down in a parachute. His grandfather orders him to deliver the trigger safely, even if he is fatally wounded. Soon, the ATS's road unit and the helicopter find and chase him. Rian manages to escape them, but gets gravely injured. Almost losing his consciousness, Rian walks towards a house in the blizzard. He knocks with all his might and the door opens. By the twist of fate, he is astonished to see Zuni open the door and call out Rian. Her seven-year-old son, who is also named Rian, responds and peeks out. Captain Ranjeev, or the Rian, collapses unconsciously. He is taken in and Zulfi attends to his injuries. They do not know he is the real Rihan, and assume he is Captain Ranjeev because the uniform. Zuni's son Rihan wonders whether Ranjeev will perish, and they all hope not. They are unable to get a doctor due to the continuing blizzard. Tayagi is infuriated that they lost the in pursuit, and is coming down on her team to catch him. When Zuni tends to Captain Ranjeev, she gets some strange vibes of familiarity, but doesn't understand. Rahan wakes up from his coma with a nightmare about him eliminating Zuni. He checks whether he still has the trigger, but collapses again. The next morning, he wakes up better. The child, Rihan, is very talkative with him. He tells Captain Ranjeev that his mother, Zuni, had said he could imagine anyone as his father, because his real father is gone. So, he thinks of the famous cricketer Rahul Dravid as his father. Dravid is known as Mr. Dependable for his unrelenting play, and Rihan wonders whether Captain Ranjeev is also similarly dependable. Zulfi serves food for Captain Ranjeev. Every time Zuni calls her son by the name Rahan, Captain Ranjeev is shocked, but manages to hide it. From Zulfi, Ranjeev K. Rihan learns that Zuni blames herself for his fake demise in the bomb blast. She also lost her mother a few years ago. He just wants to leave their house as soon as the weather gets better. Zulfi insists he stayed to recover. Yet, Ranjeev tries to leave, but the blizzard stops him. Zuni and her son bicker about him, not learning the Indian national anthem fully. Rihan tries to console his mother by saying that no matter what, he will love her more than she loves him. He goes to Ranjeev and asks whether he knows the anthem too, and the latter lies, saying no. Zuni asks why he is lying. As a soldier, he would definitely know the anthem. Ranjeev, who has been trying to contact his base, loses his nerve and shouts, saying he doesn't care, and is uninterested in playing father. Zuni is very upset and goes upstairs with Rihan. Ranjeev regrets his behavior, but feels helpless and angry. Zuni sends Rihan to Ranjeev's room with a glass of turmeric milk. In his cute ways, Rihan tells him not to try and discard the milk as Zuni will find out. Ranjeev can't help but feel a liking for the adorable child. At night, as he walks out sleeplessly, Ranjeev sees Zuni sitting in the hall with the old gift of blue sweater ruined in the blast. She helps him change the bandage and for a moment, they both feel that pulse of touch they have felt before. Yet, she cannot infer why he feels familiar, nor does he give any clue. Moreover, she is still not talking to him. The next morning, he helps her repair the outhouse and apologizes for his rude behavior. In no time, Captain Ranjeev becomes friends with Zuni and Rihan. Young Rihan likes him a lot. Later, Zuni asks about Ranjeev's family, and he replies that he is an orphan. When Zuni feels sorry for his lonely life, Ranjeev refutes that a soldier's life is supposed to be so. She thinks he is more than a soldier. He shares that he could never trust anyone as he cannot trust himself with his way of life. She mentions that he feels unreasonably familiar. Sooner, they all bond like a family, to the point that young Rian asks Zuni whether he can call Ranjeev, dad. At night, when everyone else has gone to bed, Zuni and Ranjeev sing songs and playfully twirl. They get intimate, and Zuni slowly realizes that Ranjeev reminds her of Rian. She is shocked to the core when he places his hand on her heart and states that she is scared. When he confirms that he is indeed her long-lost Rihan, she is too stunned to even move. He confesses that he never forgave himself 
and had sworn to never be involved with her again. But karma brought him to her doorstep to die. But she defied destiny and saved him. Zulfi, who came there at the moment, overhears everything. They question him, and he reveals that he is a Kashmiri on a mission, but refuses to reveal the details. When Zulfi berates him for toying with Zuni's life, he apologizes and explains that he couldn't help falling in love with her. He swears that his love is true, and that he will return to be all hers after his mission. Zulfi states that a true lover never leaves his partner and urges Zuni to decide whether to forgive Rihan or not. Zuni shares how she self-blamed for his passing, for sending him to the blast site. She cries about how she has tried all these years to draw his picture from memory to show his father to her son. She laments why she should let him into her life again, only to get hurt. He has no answers, and she runs away, devastated. He leaves Zuni's house soon, but the child Rihan requests not to and declares how much he loves him. Ranjeev, or Rihan, still leaves. But Zuni doesn't let him go. They get married, and they live together. In a few days, the blizzard recedes, and Tayagi and Rawat get to Kashmir to catch the mastermind. They issue a public alert about an injured faking to be a soldier along with the photo of the trigger. Zulfi ignores this news on TV much to Rihan's peace. Later, Colonel Uncle, an army veteran, and also a family friend arrives for a nightcap. Rihan learns that Uncle has radio transmitters at his faraway, isolated home. The next day, Zulfi spots the trigger from the news in Rihan's pocket. He silently takes Rihan to the uncle's and points his gun at him, revealing that he knows the truth. He also holds the trigger and a scuffle ensues. Rihan argues that he would be with Zuni forever, once the trigger is handed over. But in the fight, Zulfi falls down the ledge of the hill and perishes. Rihan screams in agony, but he proceeds with his mission. He contacts the base, and they would get there next day to take the trigger. On the other side, Tayagi also listens to this message via the hacked radios, and they plan to nab him and the trigger. Zumi, who is getting water from the lake with her son Rihan, sees the frozen body of her father floating underneath through the ice tunnel. She screams helplessly. She is silently grieving when Rihan or Ranjeev get back home at night. Rihan lies to Zuni that Zulfi is drinking rum with the uncle and would be back only the next day. She also sees the news alert about the lurking whose portrait sketch is shown. She immediately recognizes that it is Rihan, the love of her life. She sneaks out with her son after taking the trigger. She drives to Colonel Uncle's house and informs the Atia squad via the radio about the situation. Rihan has already realized that Zuni has left and is pursuing her on foot. Tayagi informs Zuni about the gravity of the danger if the trigger falls into the IKF's hands. She advises him to stop Rihan, whatever it takes. Tayagi can only reach her the next morning due to the weather. But before Tayagi arrives, Rihan gets to Zuni by next morning. He tries to emotionally manipulate her, but she doesn't trust him and asks to eliminate her like he did her dad and uncle. But Rihan explains that her father's death was an accident and that he loves her dearly. He also reasons that if the trigger is not handed over, the IKF would murder all of them in the most harrowing way, led by none else but his own grandfather. He takes the trigger forcefully. Zuni questions his conscience as a nuclear blast would eliminate millions of innocents. Rihan thinks that the IKF would use the trigger only to threaten and bargain for the freedom of Kashmir. But Zuni has lost her trust. They hear choppers landing. Rihan tries to leave, to hand over the trigger to his grandpa. Zuni has no other way. She shoots Rihan on his leg. Raging, Rihan turns back pointing his gun at her, but he will not shoot her. He limps forward to hand over the trigger, but Zuni shoots him, tearfully declaring her love for him. The IKF's chopper is blown down by Tayagi and her team, who arrive on the scene. Zuni runs to the fatally wounded Rihan. He tells her that he is not scared anymore and states that he loves her more than she loves him. He perishes in her hands. Later, she takes her son Rihan to his dad Rihan's grave. She tells him that the real choice in life is about choosing the greater of two goods and the lesser of two evils. When her son wonders whether his dad was evil, she replies that what is right for one might be wrong for another, and that his dad did only what he thought was right. They offer prayers for him and leave. 